Hello and welcome once again to Captain Goodspeed Maths. I'm Joe, if you're new around here, and today we are talking about the OCR FSMQ new spec, and today it's binomial distribution, which is also a university topic. It's also stats 2, I believe, and, you know, it, it's a, a very good thing uh, to have in your armory. So the learn objective today is to be able to work out probabilities related to the binomial distribution function. So let's get into it. How many ways can you order A, B, C and D in a four letter code? In the first position you can have A, B, C or D, which is four choices. In the second position you can only have three choices, one has gone. Third position you only have two of choices because two have gone. In the fourth position you can only have one choice. So you've got four but three but two but one uh, choices, which is 24. So uh, that is also equal to 4 factorial. Uh, in general, if you want to arrange n different items in a row, there will be n factorial ways of doing it. So how many five-letter words can you make from the letters of apple? Okay, let's have a think about it. Generally, n factorial ways of uh, arranging n items. Five letters uh, in apple, so five factorial. But they are not all different there is a duplicate P. This means we'll have some words which are the same. So divide out by two factorial because you've got two replications uh, or two letters that are the same. If you if you get that, there's um, yeah, two letters that are, that are the same. I think that, that makes sense. So the number of words is five factorial over two factorial which is 120 over two which is 60. So Let's do an uh, example then. So students are taking a multi-choice exam. There are 10 questions, each on separate topics. Each question has four options. A student who has done no revision tries to guess all of them. What is the probability that they get them all right? So we've got a little box here. There's 10 questions. Each question has four options. So they want to get them all right. So um, each uh, time they get it right, it's a quarter because you've got a quarter of a chance of getting it right because there's four options uh, and one of them is going to be right so you've got one out of four so every time you get it right it is going to be a quarter which equals one over four to the ten uh, which I haven't bothered working out so that's what it is uh, what's the probability that they get them all wrong you might think it's the same. It's not because you you have a bigger chance of getting it wrong. You have a three in four chance of getting it wrong. So this time's uh, going to be three to the ten over four to the ten, which is three over four all to the ten. What's the probability that they will get six correct? Okay, so let's tick six like that, and then let's tick four wrong. So you think, okay, it's. Uh, 1 over 4 to the 6 times 3 over 4 to the 4. Hold on. That's a very specific way of getting 6 right. There's loads of other combinations of 6 ticks and 4 crosses. I think you get where we're coming from. The number of combinations of this code is 10 factorial over 6 factorial times 4 factorial. Uh, this is known as 10C6. So our C numbers that we learned in the binomial expansions video. So there are 10 C6 ways of getting 6 right and 4 wrong. Each one of these has a chance of 1 over 4 to the 6 and 3 over 4 to the 4 of happening. So probability of getting 6 correct is 10 C6 times 1 over 4 to the 6 times 3 over 4 to the 4, which equals 0 0.016. So that's the probability that you will get 6 correct by just completely guessing. So do not guess uh, in a multi-choice exam because you've got a very, very, very small chance of getting, you know, a decent mark. So this is the binomial distribution function. So binomial probability model is a very famous discrete model in uh, statistics and mathematics in general. Uh, it'll give you the chances of getting outcomes from scenarios where you've got a fixed number of trials, n, i.e. the number of questions, you've got 10 questions. Uh, in each of those trials you will get one of two outcomes, success or failure, in that uh, particular example. You either right or wrong with a question. 
and the probability of a success is constant. So every time you answer the question, you had a one in four chance of getting it right. So that's a constant probability of success, P. Each trial is also independent of the next, i.e. the outcome of one does not affect the other. So we imagine that these 10 questions were completely different. It didn't matter what you did on one question as to whether you got the next question. So, you know, it's not a sort of um, error carried forward type scenario or something like that. Um, they are just 10 completely random questions. They do not affect each other at all. They are independent. So... Uh, let's get the, the formula in there. So if this is the case, your scenario can be modelled by the distribution x, where x uh, can be distributed binomially with uh, n trials and probability of success p. So we write it as that. x can be distributed uh, bin n, comma p. So uh, the probability of x equal an r, so having r successes, if x is that, is equal to ncr times p to the r times 1 minus p to the n minus r. Now that might just sound complete nonsense, but basically you've got n trials, so 10 questions, you've got probability of success p, which is going to be a quarter, and the answer is going to be trials c, how many successes I want. So probability of having 6 correct, so it's uh, going to be 10c6. So we want six successes. Multiply by the success of how many I want to the power uh, uh, of r. So, so the probability uh, of success, which is a quarter, to how many I want, which is six, times the failure to the rest. So the failure is one minus uh, a quarter, which is three quarters to the rest, which is 4, because six, uh, 10 minus 6 is 4. So hopefully that gets it in your head. Um, the best way to learn this is through practice. So that's exactly what we're going to do. So example 1, a man fires 10 shots at a target. With each shot, he has a 70% chance of hitting the bullseye. All shots are independent of each other. What is the probability that he hits 7 bullseyes? So... What do we have here? So we have, uh, we're looking for a number of trials n, so we've got 10 trials, we've got a probability of success, 70%, but remember, that is 0.7. All trials are independent, so it is binomial, and we want uh, our successes, which is 7. Okay, so is it binomial? Yes. Uh, what is a trial? Firing a shot. Uh, what is a success? Getting a bullseye. What is the probability of a success? 0.7. Are the trials independent? Yes. Technically no, but we're told it is in the question. So we just take the examiner's word for it. Because if you think about a man shooting a target, if he misses completely once, he's going to adjust and, you know, they're not 10 completely independent trials, theoretically. So let X be the number of bullseyes in 10 shots. X can be distributed binomially 10, 0.7 because we've got 10 trials and a probability of success 0.7. So the probability of getting 7 successes is 10C7 times success to the 7 times failure to the rest. So 10C7 times success to the 7 times failure to the rest. Hopefully that makes sense. So type that all in into your, into your calculator. And you get 0.2668. Leave it as many decimal places as you want. You probably want at least three, in my opinion. Standard is four. Or five, you know. But I, I, I tend to like four as, as, as my probability. So that's a 26.68% chance of getting seven uh, bullseyes. Which is, you know, not bad really. Example 2. 40% of chocolates in a very large box are soft centres. The rest are hard. If you take 5 chocolates, what's the probability you will get 3 or 4 soft centres? Is it binomial? What is a trial? Well, the trial is picking a, uh, picking a chocolate. What is a success? Getting a soft centre. What is the probability of that success? 40%, which is 0.4. Are the trials independent? Yes but it's a very large box. <laughs> um, you know, technically no, because if you take 
um, one chocolate, you're making it more likely that somebody's going to get uh, the other type of chocolate, if you like. Um, but we're going to say it's an extremely large box, so we'll say there's thousands of uh, chocolates in there, so you taking one isn't really going to affect anything. So, yes, they're independent for the sake of the question. So let x equal the number of soft centers in a handful of five sweets. So we've got uh, five trials, because we've got five sweets, uh, and a probability of success being 0 0.4. We want uh, the probability that you get three or four soft centers. So the probability of three is 5c3, success to the three, failure to the rest. Suc um, four successes is 5c4, success to the four, failure to the rest. Uh, so the probability of 3 or 4 is those probabilities added together. So we get 0 0.2304 plus 0 0.0768, which equals 0 0.3072. So there you go, that's your answer. Easy peasy. Now then, uh, if x is binomially, there's no blurb to this one, they're just giving you uh, all of the, the information you need. If uh, x is distributed binomially 10, 0 0.5, find the probability of x is greater than or equal to 2. So, no, yeah. So the probability of uh, x being greater than or equal to 2 means the probability of at least 2. So let's have a think of it. Draw a number line, and at least 2 means 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And we know to go stop at 10 because there's 10 trials. So what we're left with is 0 and 1. We don't want to have to add up all the probabilities of, to 10. So we don't want to add 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. But remember, probabilities add up to 1. So the probability of x is greater than or equal to 2 is equal to 1 minus probability of x is less than or equal to 1, which equals 1 minus uh, p of uh, x equals 1 plus p of uh, x equals 0, which equals 1 minus 10c1, success to the 1, failure to the rest, uh, plus 10c0 times um, success to the 0, failure to the rest, which equals 1 minus 0 0.0107, which is 0 0.9893. And that is that. So that is the, the binomial distribution, both types of questions that you can be asked in the exam. It's it's very easy once you get your head around it. It's just sort of working out that formula, learning that formula, what N and R mean. Watch this video, uh, look over the PowerPoint in your own time, uh, which will be in the description as always. So, um, yeah, if you found it helpful, make sure you leave a like down below. If not, then let me know how I can improve in the future to make it a little bit more clear. Uh, and of course, very best of luck for your FSMQ whenever it is.